All right, here we go again. If you are new to the channel, the three simple rules are no blah blah intro, no pausing, some yada yada at the end, and that's it. We continue with the Ricky Gervais show, series four, episode three. She whips her knickers off. I'm going to go with Carl because I think I heard him say knickers before as well. Knickers. Yeah. I th yes. I'm going to go with Carl. Let go. An honest mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, yep. our producer. Huh? An inverted commas heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they know. They know. How are you doing, alright, Carl? Yeah, didn't they also write something about me, uh, bald round head? Yes, perfectly round with a bald man head, they said, so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <laughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, if you've, have you given it a little sort of polish? Because you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it. I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. <laughs> He does! He does! If you've ever seen that show, that And is, also, he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find with a little four-foot human, and it's actually half a million years old, and they give it a name, and it's got, it's the first, you know, <laughs> Ospropithecus into, right? He looks like one of them as well. Perfectly round little, <laughs> he's the missing link. He looks half human, half monkey. He's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. I he's know. one of those in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course, his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, like, those skinny little things that you can get oranges <laughs> out of holes with. <laughs> and it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything. Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so. Okay, that's right. Uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some on. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, Suzanne uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom. She said, well, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. She always worries uh, about when I have a shave because I, I just. Uh, you know that's I mean? your girlfriend, Carl. <laughs> I know. What's saying that, that. Yeah. just think. So don't worry about Heat saying it. <laughs> the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No, because it doesn't matter. It's a magazine. Boyd. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? Uh, a bit boring, isn't it? But <laughs> we've got to go. Have <laughs> been listening? Should we do a show? No, it'll be a great day for them, but I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and yeah, she'll get ideas. and get married. <laughs> have to let her down and all that. Why, yeah. why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just. Who's it for at the end of the day? I've been with Suzanne for 11 years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, That's what counts. You're and never happy. I am. I'm all right. Yeah, no, you, I know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You are you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed, but I'm always happy. I was annoyed here. I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffling his feet. He had a pair of those stupid skulls on, and he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes. You don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip-flops annoy me. Yeah. You know? But I'm happy. I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great. It's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there. <laughs> you know? But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be <laughs> locked in the fairy towers. So, because everything annoys me. <laughs> um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm all right. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was oh, a little present okay. from Jane. It was a golfing day. And I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. That happens oh. every day. Sometimes, Carl, I think <laughs> you're on another planet. Here's the only one. Oh, it's a song on another planet. Ah, it's okay. I wonder why Jane didn't go with him golfing. He doesn't like golfing, I guess. Another girl, another planet by the only ones. What a song! Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, 
Dr. Fox will disagree with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think, Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Great, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great show. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking him. If you'd uh, like to let us know what your uh, favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, well, yeah, we've but... got so much to, to get through well, this sorry, show. Let me just get my. I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a, golfing a day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Oh. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I know. It's well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, as if right. present it was playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf event. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, it's all right. It wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, but that's what, that was my immediate thought. <laughs> I was, this is, this is. Yeah, me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. <laughs> it it just sounds like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> <laughs> But right. you don't play golf, Jay. I know, I know. Go. <laughs> go, go, go. Go. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so, <clears throat> I chose Carl, obviously. Um, uh, we went, well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf. Absolutely brilliant. Such a I beautiful did. place in Stoke Pogue. It's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Oh, uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to well, know. I want to know. We, what uh, he bought. He, we, he bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes. We had to change them. He was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over twenty-two pounds on his, these golf <laughs> shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired spending. a buggy. That okay. was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just, it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me and you were a bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, I think, what is I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers and he'd scream and go, stop! And he'd put his foot down on the brake and then went like reverse. Well, at one point he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake and then we had, we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I look behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams! <laughs> What's the tree, right? He was, he was, he was, so, oh, cheap to hazard. I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind, because I had to go to my ball, because, uh, sure. anyway. Um, so, uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that. Because it's always the first one, because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, he did up, man. And I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, <laughs> he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like, right angles, straight into these, uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around and he goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing, because it's, like, impolite to laugh. But he, he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then second shot, I go, you know you're off a three now, if you take another shot. He went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. He, he hits the ground before it, and this is the ball off the <laughs> And I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were the terrible. Parties. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or something. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What oh, annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, you and I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness Ooh. or laziness. Lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. Damn. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly fell asleep. He fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, oh, God, no, do you know what I mean, though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you, I was tired anyway. I've been stressed out for four and a half hours, right? Uh, <laughs> right. My life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm going to have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason, it didn't come on. But I thought, it's all right. I'll just. Uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. It's summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so, yeah. <laughs> so you're in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. He calls up, hassling me. So I said, well, I won't... Uh, yeah, it doesn't normally take that long for me because, you know, I haven't got, like, long hair. I've got a dryer and sure. I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late, though, when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is late. This oh, next. Doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had, like, another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, yeah, all right. So I get out. 
I'm drying like my tackle and what have you. <laughs> Calls back again thirty seconds film, later. You know. No, I don't. You know, I don't, don't like really that. Give it a wipe. <laughs> thirty seconds later. Come on. So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area naked with a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. It's a relaxing weekend. <laughs> But yeah. anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. And then, we're, then we're sitting yeah. in the bar, I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like, we're having a, a rather nice, uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going, I've got an ink. Is this 1955 <laughs> you live in? <laughs> 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 it's so right. And we, we are knackered, because, you know, he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for, o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, so, um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf course, we had a buggy, yeah. it wasn't even exercise. So, we get onto conversations, he's talking like, he's, he's asking me stuff about evolution, what about, what's the, tell me that, why, why the giraffe, oh, what was no. that rubbish about the giraffe <laughs> getting a long neck? I said, well, it didn't, it didn't try and get a long neck, it, it was selected, and he said, but, why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. One had a long enough neck to survive and pass it in. He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? But by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is oh warming God. up. This, this is about the line. Right? <laughs> he said, "Why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder?" Right. Okay. No, right. Okay. So Holy he's thinking. Shit. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. We get on to, uh, I said, well, things are, uh, I said, uh, um, uh, we can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses, they evolved, and that's why, um, uh, soon we won't have an antibiotic that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said, and this is about, um, half eleven, and I said, I'm going to bed, right? He said, in the future, they reckon that we'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Let's put a song on, right? No. Oh, so you're going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. Yeah. Oh my god, a yogurt you can have a chat with. But the yogurt is not... Ah... Uh, even the box. You can't the do the actual yogurt. And Sonic, right? on XFM 104.9, and Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. So let's just get this right. What did Carl say? He's just specifically he said, he he said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said, I'm going to bed. He went, no, really, I said, no, I'm going to bed, Carl. There's no point now, because, I mean, it's, it's just like you're talking gobbledygook. You know what I mean? I might as well talk to a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are. Sure. I don't know they. people who post things on the internet that he reads. Uh, I think. Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love you. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, yeah. like this little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, darling. Here's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. All right. Well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right. It's when I was away on holiday, right? I got. Uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? <laughs> so, but, uh, we were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought, Ding dong. might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, and I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future, and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think... You can't, you can't, evo it, 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 by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's, it's not, not successful, it can't pass on its uh, genetic material or that, uh, but it, it, anyway, if, if you're around, anyway, it's, Rick, it's working. Anyway, if you're Rick, around, anyway. it's working. Oh, Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs oh, are as evolved as you and me. Well, yeah. <laughs> no disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, what's what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because there's more water than land, isn't they? Right. So what? And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can imagine. I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> 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 no, but it went. It, do you know what I mean? From well, what was it? it was bacteria. It was yeah. fish, mermaid, man. <laughs> and wood, not so anyway. <laughs> Oh, so gosh! Oh, God! No, there there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you got it right, though. So, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, it, it went, it went bacteria, fish, mermaid, <laughs> man. Um, so what, I, what next is the big question. <laughs> so, so it was telling you all about this, and what I've been saying now, like, uh, we shouldn't have interfered, because maybe if 
we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you. Maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you. Sure. If we really yeah. needed to. Yeah. And yeah. Like that. Okay. So, we've, so we've interfered with with mm. evolution, you see. Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future got? Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, ev uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's di it, 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 there are different parameters, there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on genetic material or not. Okay. So in that sense you're right. And that, but, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yoghurt that you can eat and have a conversation <laughs> with. So yeah, this, this is what it was saying, yeah. it was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that, you sure. know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is, go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up. Go on. Have a chat with your yoghurt and have something to eat. <laughs> what do you mean, have a chat with your yoghurt? Doesn't explain it. Because of the amount of, I mean, you have them yoghurts already, those friendly yoghurts. Those bacteria friendly ones, so this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I might burst! Do you know what sometimes, Carl? I think that we're having a chat with the yoga. <laughs> <laughs> there can't be any difference. Uh, uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> well. More informative. God. <laughs> 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 well, enjoy uh, that. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again for letting me know about your uh, old knobbo and, and edge and yeah. all that. No, okay. Now listen, you just got an email there saying, can you turn up? Uh, your microphone, Steve. Apparently my voice is a little bit uh, quiet. Carl has to do one thing, make sure we're heard. That's yep. all he has to do. Well, I can hear it. Sounds fine to me. Mm. Well, not to the, the listeners, and that's who we're trying to please. Well, yeah. it's one person, so they can't hear Yes, but we've only got one listener. He's <laughs> <laughs> not happy. We're buggered. <laughs> You're allowed to say buggered. Um, mm. Not twice, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> One's gonna be a mistake. Yeah. Twice, pointing it out, is definitely, yeah, complaint material. Now, Carl. Carl, you haven't uh, told us about your holiday yet. You were meant to do it last week and you didn't. Uh, you started yes. doing this but we didn't have time because we had to do monkey news about a monkey who was <laughs> a director who cared about lighting and stuff. <laughs> is there but more it, monkey news this week? Uh, yep. is it as, uh, uh, okay. Is there, uh, is it real monkey news? C did it happen or is it mostly embellishment in your round little head? It all Some happened. Proper stuff. It all yeah. happened. Okay, good. Stuff. So holiday, where did you go on holiday? Uh, Sardinia. Good? Sardinia. Yeah, it's alright, yeah. Uh, nice food and that, it's important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, nice beaches and what have you. Excellent. Oh, it's like a nice long beach to walk down. Yeah. But, uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? <laughs> you know how, uh, nudists do me head in. Oh, sure. no. Right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chick uh, chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not Ooh. a big problem being... I mean, they're done in by nudists. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me, it sort of ruins the day a little bit. Because it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, <laughs> well anyway, right, so I'm walking along the beach, right, lovely long beach, what have you, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are, your, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's like on all fours going, oh, yeah. like that, you know what I mean, <laughs> looking at things. <laughs> <laughs> like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get, the, to get them tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> yeah. I've just got, you know, flip-flops on, pair of shorts Some and, yeah, uh, and like a little, a little light. Sure. Sure. Mm. So anyway, walking along, and uh, Suzanne goes, oh look, right, and there's this woman, German I think, uh, coming out of the- How can you tell she was German? Under well, arm hair? I'll get to it. Forget okay. the under arm hair. <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was <laughs> smuggling seaweed. <laughs> And the, f the funny thing is, right, <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> <laughs> smuggling seaweed! Oh, that's oh, amazing! She, uh, she was a bit hairy was down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days, right? <laughs> Looked at her, just, it was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she's wearing furry trunks, right? Oh, so anyway, oh, so God. I'm walking around. <laughs> so, <laughs> So as 
time it's like, oh, look, and I'm like, oh, not again. You know, because every oh. time we go away, it always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself? Oh, my God. Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right, oh, yeah. but he had shorts on. He yeah. was happy, yeah. right? But every time, like, because I walked past her and he sort of ran off, because he's, he's embarrassed. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing normal about it. What can he do? He can't go, all right, mate, because he knows it's, it's odd, right? How so, old was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? <sighs> it's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on. Do you know what I mean? It's they, they always look older, don't they? When when they haven't got clothes on anyway. But I'd say she was about forty, forty one. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, so yeah. So <laughs> I walked past, and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right? No clothes on. Little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on. <laughs> you know what I mean? That takes more effort for me putting boots on. So put the shorts on. Right? Right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. <laughs> I walked we past do? and, and I, I'm yeah. getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. There's I no love the way. fact they're scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of um, sort of iron sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists <laughs> run away. <laughs> yeah. Alright, oh, okay. So, but no, so, so we sort of come walking back and what have you and, and you know, I have, a, have another look and what have you and he runs off again. Why are you having another look if it offends you so much? He has to. Oh, you might as well just, just have a look, you know what I mean? It's just putting it on show and what have you. Yeah. But yeah, the interesting thing was that I just wondered whether the, the husband... Cause if I, the husband were really nude, you'd look at his tackle, because remember when you went to see those two strippers and it was woman <laughs> and man <laughs> and Eric, they went there never forget that. shots off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. No. Wow. No. You would. You just nope. check it out. It's natural, isn't it? You just go, oh, all right. <laughs> on, it is normal or whatever. Because you don't know if you, you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go on, no. anyway, so, um, but he got <laughs> no. us talking because I was, that, yes, no. then, as soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Ruined. Do you know what I mean? Why do people Jeez, do this? God. What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it and what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I think that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> yeah, that's the title. I, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, oh, I'm what? wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist. You know, one of those official nudist spokespeople. You know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, oh, it, it is mine. They are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some resort or whatever and for, you just call for the nudes sure. and that. Okay. And it's Were just they playing like, volleyball? Well, the annoying thing was, bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? Well, don't play a sport where you got to bend over. <laughs> 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 Don't get a couch. Neil that's Young light. from the album Zuma, and, and that's uh, no, part so of my heart. On Instagram, one hundred four point nine, Wicked Face, Team Rich, and Carl Pilkington. We just had a, a text here that says, and I don't know what truth there is in this, as ever, but John says there is apparently a nude bike ride today mm. in Hyde Park. Now I can't believe that's the case because I don't think it's allowed, is it? You can't ride around with your your veg, can you? I don't know. Why would you want to? Well, it's a good point. On a bike. <laughs> on a bike, on the fact that that's what disgusts him. I, 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 I want, do you know what, if we did appeal for a nudist to call in, I'd want a very specific sort, I don't want to, I want, I want a German nudist, a middle-aged man called Helmut. Okay. If there is any, <laughs> or the closest one to it. So, I want a middle-aged man from Germany, if your name is Helmut, you're in, but I'll accept, Helmut. I'll accept Hans, um, um. Carl would be good, okay. isn't it? All right. Yeah. I think, I'm, I'm wondering if the age might. Maybe we could. Could we? Could we broaden? Okay. That a just bit? a German. A German nudist bloke. Right. Could he at least be fat? <laughs> <laughs> could I find a fat <laughs> German fella? If your name's Helmer, we're going to give you a big prize. Yeah. But you know, any fat German fella who likes to get his sausage out. Sure. 
Okay. Sour crate. Yeah. What's the phone number? Sour crate. Uh, 0871. Triple two one zero four nine. It'd be good just to get an email or a text or with a contact on it, and okay. then I can just call them up in the week. Sure. And uh, eighty three nine three six is the uh, text number. I think I, mean, I don't know what our um, our audience demographic pans out like, Rick, but I'm suspecting that's probably a fairly small fraction of our listenership. The, I uh, know, but you know, the there must German be someone out there. So you know, a fat German who likes to get his tackle out. The phones are going. So phones away, going. straight away. Just answer it, Carl. Just answer it. Just pop that. Like, it could be anything. Well, yeah. just yeah. say what it is. It could be a nutter. It could yeah. be a nutter. But yeah. just yeah. say hello. Just if tell your turn. It's not a straight away. It'll stay there, won't we? It'll stay there. We'll answer it. Answer it. Leave it. Answer it. I would leave it. I would leave it. It's gone. There you go. He bottled it. So, just as well. Well, you took too long to answer it. There's a vicar in, uh, Australia who's, who's started sort of doing his services and all that. In nude. Hot in it there. Well, that. Yeah, well, you get the churches, church. aren't churches are pretty cold. <laughs> That's, uh, it was on, uh, on some website. Of course just, it was, yep. Just saying about a, a vicar <laughs> and that who's, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of nudists and that who want to get married. Do it, you know, you know, don't mess about with the wedding dress and that, just <laughs> snip up. Jesus. Well, well, also, I suppose it's so, uh, I suppose if you believe in God, you believe that, uh, that's the way to be, in it? Because Adam and Eve and that. Yeah, but then in Adam and Eve, they, the shame made us uh, dress up, didn't it? Yeah. Eating the apple and things. Yeah, but God didn't want that, did he? No, he wanted to see it all. He was loving it. <laughs> he was aware of yeah. getting a life full of all of that, and then they, the snake, the snake said, cover yourself up. Stitched, stitched him right up. Yeah. So if you believe in God, which clearly I don't, do you believe in God, Carl? Uh, oh my god. I don't know, I don't really worry about it. It was ages ago, wasn't it? <laughs> so, you know, I didn't expect that about, to be Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Not that bothered. <laughs> Adam and Eve is pretty interesting though, isn't it? It's not, well, how, how is it interesting? He made, he made, he made man made, uh, out of dust. Then he, c just because he could, he's having a laugh. Um, then he made uh, her out of his, one of his ribs again. He'd like to vary it a little bit. Then they had two sons. Uh, which gave rise to the entire human race. What was going on there then? What would have happened if they didn't get on? <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Sometimes with pandas they don't fancy the other one, do they? They go, well that's my choice, one. You've brought me one panda from Lisbon Zoo and I've got to chag that. What if I don't fancy it? What if they bring in the right, a right slapper? Do you think that What if it's the equivalent of like, um, uh, uh Love Island, whatever well, it's called. I it was like Celebrity Love Island. Yeah. And they're going, I am not shagging that slapper. Every, every panda in the world has seen that dirty old mott in magazines. Why am <laughs> I meant to mate with it? I've got some dignity. Are you talking about Adam there or Panda? Was that um? Well, I think <laughs> either is fine, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, so, bad do pandas. you think that Adam had well. any say when God was making <laughs> Eve? Was he saying, "Can make make the boobs a bit bigger"? Would you? And, uh, I'm sort of I'm blonde guy. I'm into blondes, really. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I don't know, did he have any input or was it just... <laughs> I don't know. Well, I suppose it's... It was uh, one of his ribs, after I know, but well, he's probably oh, restricted. He goes, well, I'm, I'm working with a rib, Adam. <laughs> Give me a break, there's only so many things I can do. Well, he's probably, he probably in kind of intensive care, wasn't he, with well, the whole... They go, well, I can't just keep making the boobs and things bigger, because their legs are get short. I, go, I don't mind well, short well, legs. Well, yeah, they're getting longer. I don't mind no legs. Well, I don't mind no legs. Thinking. As long as the boobs are sizable. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what's weird, though, Steve, right? Everyone's heard of, like, Adam and Eve, yeah? What's the surname? <laughs> yeah, where'd they get their post from? Unbelievable. Now listen, before you play the next tune, we should just, uh, we were trying to, trying to mop up some stuff from the last couple of shows which we haven't dealt with yet. <laughs> One of which thinking. is an obsession of yours so because you're, we're on a radio station, uh, Rick and I come in, we bring in CDs, music we love, it means so much to us, we adore it. You don't really care about music, you, you work at a radio station, it's just, eh, uh, you know, I don't no, care. I do, I do. No, I you do. don't. I do like a good track. I don't like everything that comes out and everyone raves about. Yeah, you thought the iPod wasn't worth it because you you, got, you named the five tracks you'd like. What was it? It was In the Ghetto, Babushka, Living in the City. What was the other one? Killing of Georgie. Uh, Killing of Georgie. And there was one other one or something. And you just only like songs with a story. Yeah, but then there's a reason to listen to it, isn't there? Well, not only story once. Going on. No, because you might forget the ending. Listen to it again. Yeah, anyway, you might, we, yeah. You've been listening to Babushka quite a lot, is that right? Because you've, you've really got into your head now, you're trying to decipher well, the when story. Well, when I've been sort of asking for songs with stories, people have texted and emailed in and whatever, and I've had, I've had a couple, you know, last time we did the show. So I've gone, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Uh, and Babushka, when I was away on holiday, I listened to it a few times because I like the story. It's a good little story going on. You've got some thoughts on it though, have you? 
Uh, well, we'll, we'll have a listen well, to Well, let's have a listen uh, to the track, and then I know you've got some queries you'd like to raise. It's just about a, a woman in it who, uh, I don't know, she's ugly or something, aged badly, and her husband gets bored with her. Have a listen, see what you think. I, I bet that's not the story. I bet that's not the story, that song. I'm not sure I know that song. Babushka. Listening to Magic 105.4, all the way back to 1979, Kate Bush Babushka. <laughs> so, um, we yeah, would like your suggestions for songs which have stories in them, which um, may entertain Carl. They could shoot to the top of his list. What do you think of that, Carl? That has a, has a, a little story there. Uh, I like it, but. So she she tests her husband, yeah, she writes him letters, she gets a letter back, it's a pseudonym, Babushka's her pseudonym, it's not her real name, but her real name is uh, uh, Molly Strank <laughs> from Ealing, um, <laughs> and uh, he responds, he goes, oh, he's, he's, he's you know, so uh, in real terms, he's, he's having a bit of a, an illicit affair behind her back, because he doesn't know it's his wife. So he goes, oh, well, I'll take this a bit further, see how far I go. He turns up, she turns up, she, you know, he gets it on with her, and he's falling for her because she's acting like she used to act, you know. It's, yeah, it's, so was yeah. he just playing along with it? Was he like a no? No, no, it's not, because they'd have said that in the song. They don't leave oh, it up to Some people that, do that, don't they? Well, it wasn't. Kate okay, Bush would have said, and by the way, he's playing along. <laughs> She'd have given us a clue. He's not. He's fallen for it. Yeah, Carl has to read into it. She went along incognito. He thought yeah, it was another good. woman. But how much work can you do to yourself to if say say if, like uh, <laughs> I I wrote a letter to Suzanne, yeah. right? <laughs> saying she uh, knows was you. It'd have egg stains on it. It'd be spelt wrong. No, but and you'd sign it Carl, crossed out uh, Babushka. I wrote to uh, <laughs> I won't pick Babushka. <laughs> uh, that's a ridiculous name. That wouldn't have worked anyway. You just get a vision in your head of I wouldn't have answered a letter from someone called Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> If Kate Bush is listening, please call in, because I'd love her to have a conversation with you. I mean, that would be good. Forget Helmer. No, no, Helmer, you keep trying. A fat German, we want Kate Bush and a fat German. What I mean is, though... Now, wait a minute. What worries me is he didn't answer the last phone call. What if Kate Bush does for me? <laughs> Well, if, anyone knows, if anyone knows Kate Bush, give her a call now. She's probably not listening. She's probably doing yoga or something, I imagine, or making a, <laughs> a lentil soup, or, or maybe just like <laughs> repotting some plants, right? But, or practicing piano, right? But if anyone knows Kate Bush, she's got a number, call her up now, say, tune into XFM. There's a little bald mank fella wants to talk to you about Babushka. Right? <laughs> but, but, but how much? But how much? Don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll get your. Chant. The how, phones are going. That much, could be Kate Bush. Could be Bush. You yeah, that it's could, not, don't worry about it. It's that could be Bush. Kate Bush. Give me a great factor, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay, okay. Uh, answer yeah. it. You must have pressed the button. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. Well, as you said before, Tenuous, you're really just, just trying to really think cryptic. of something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure, So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, all right? Go on. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep, you know, but like, Hollyoaks is on, the omnibus, I'm just watching that, you know. Um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea, you know, okay. in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I, having morning. a cup of tea? What's going on there? I'm just watching the telly and that, but <laughs> I haven't got anything to dunk in me, uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? You know what I mean? I haven't got anything to dunk in there, and I'm just having, you know. Yeah. What, what am I doing? Is it LB? It's LR. Oh. L R. L R. So, L have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Is Go it, for it. Go on. Is it, is it Lionel Rich Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Uh, sort of Lionel, Lionel, and it's like. No, no rich tea. No, no rich tea. tea. Yeah. No biscuits, no rich tea. <laughs> Lion, no rich tea. <laughs> Lionel Rich tea. Lionel Richie. It works. It was just, it's just as coherent as one of yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's no wrong with that. I cannot believe so you got that's it. A, that's a <laughs> you got I cannot believe you got it. 
I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chucked them in, just to help you along. <laughs> so, so, what have you got for us right, this week? So we've, got, we've got three of them. Oh, we've by the way, don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters. So we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone's complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He <laughs> takes off Mondays because he works Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks not holiday a year. Not often. And, uh, and, and, and he moans. Uh, not not often. Wow. <laughs> Right, um, what, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? There's a vehicle that sells kebabs. <laughs> Initial D. Right? D. Great. Right? Have you worked that D? one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um, you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> you are. You are. You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think you're about asked. it, but we just, uh, sort of decide against it. Oh my God! And what, again, what's going on there? <laughs> you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I'll go against it. Right? I've yeah, I've got it. Is so it, it initial W O uh, Y O? Yeah, got it. Right, so okay. W Y O. That uh, one. That one works. W Y O. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Uh, and know. the last one, I don't think this burger will catch on. Okay. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, burger, and the letter burger. there is M. So you just uh, text M? or email in uh, with the answers and uh, win some stuff. What have yeah. we got? We've got some prizes. We've got uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This um, is instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So what have we got today? Yeah, well today, this is what you're taking home today. Uh, yeah. You've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is uh, good. The Aviator, the um, the award-winning um, Leonardo oh. DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese oh. biopic, and oh. once again Ladder Forty Nine. We're giving that away now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got, can we get a job like those? We've we got loads of them. Oh, oh, yeah. Excellent. Stand Email well. in if you just want a copy of Ladder 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big mm. prizes the ha signed Homer drawing, nice. uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster. And you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But in Lloyd Carl won't. Oh, never wrote anyone, has it? Has it? I think of bands that start with D. Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Really? Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting site of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. It's an excuse. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> Are they against wearing a helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Oh, it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to pop, you gonna pop, <laughs> pop it down there and cheer them on? No, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere near it. What, what are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think, you know, generally we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world, and it's going to run out one day, and we've not got any alternatives. Uh, talking of um, uh, campaigns and uh, things and that, um, did you see uh, um, Sir Bob on um, Jonathan Ross last night? Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you going to walk to uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, He's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but I probably won't, won't bother. No. <laughs> having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but... I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying is uh, it's it's good that he's he's given up a lot of his time to you know try and save the world and that. But you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right. Know. What do you mean wasting his time? 
Well, he's, he tried it before and- No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most, uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia. <coughs> and they get together and they can, they can wipe out the, the third world debt. Mm. I.e. They, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say this, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But, won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just I knew I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah, I, I admit I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the for the very worthy cause. It was because I know. Look at him looking at me. Look at him. He looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's <laughs> nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they, gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you. But I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <clears throat> game on a fruity, and then go back, <laughs> and she'd go, uh, go, can I have some more money? And she goes, we gave you a quid before, and I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with- That's, with, a, with that's a nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there, that the Africans are, uh, are nice blowing it down the arcade? <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade! They're trying to- they are trying- I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw it's with the claw is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste the no, <laughs> no, Midge. Midge, Midge. 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 Song. right another song. song, mate. They've flown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know. Uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a. It's a Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London? Yeah. And anyone listening <laughs> Sleep on Saturday, easy. Yeah, don't yeah. worry. Carl is not going to be put in charge of G8. It's not going to be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be a joy for me. That would be amazing. <laughs> but anyway, so let's assume for what in one some alternate uh, universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's uh, what? What are you? What are you going to do? You're, you're the only, you know, only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there. We've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, loads, I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I'll give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean? Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, Why? I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh- Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver. Paying right. for, uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm going to stop, to be honest. Why? Because, um, do you know this? Do you know this thing I do, Steve? Right? No. This is this is a five a month as well, right? Got got I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, "Oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold. Are you going to help her out?" Uh, so I was like, oh, oh, "Why I me?" Right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called I don't know. To call the name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So <laughs> it does to her, but go on. So uh <laughs> so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh first time I paid it I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had uh you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and, what, and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up. And you know, look after her, pay for her food, and what have you. So for a bit, you feel good, don't you? And you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> 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 so he's saying he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. No, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is this is what I mean. People turn because they can get away with it. That I don't know where to start. That isn't having a go though. I've what do you think? So what do you think? You think they're going? Don't don't bother, don't bother um, 
getting a job. <laughs> and go off a bit. And go off a bit. It's gym. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So oh. you think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time? Is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave him to it? Just leave him to it. Let him sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, oh, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not with words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that, do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up, do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads I of- I don't reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights <laughs> and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that. Right. <laughs> Job done. Like Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. <laughs> yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. Ad. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love. Oh my God, a conversation. Bob Galdoff talking to. Forget Kate Bush. Forget that would be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. <laughs> right, get on the phone. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, he's he got won't. stuff to organise. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right, I'm not going to go. I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Better record. All right, what are we having? Bit of uh, bit of killers. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Carl was thinking that actually. He just didn't want to say it. The killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh, oh, yeah. uh oh, Wednesday, wow. yeah. Sure. Um, you must be famished. Uh, well, <laughs> Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out, I think he's been trying to get there for a while and, uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything, right? And, uh, well, it's going to be you're walking straight in. He can always walk straight in with that, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world, okay? Right. And, um, it was incredible. I mean, it's a cross between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. do, you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or uh, feeds on worms. I, I, it was. I knew that one of their um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking uh, I had something to eat before I went, <laughs> and uh, I was thinking they better not have mucked around the bread. Right? Got there, beautiful, um, and uh, it was it was. It was really quite fantastic, and and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan, halfway through, on the way there, I don't like to travel well. On the way there, he actually phoned me and said, "Why?" Are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? Well, you are. You have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver school dinners <laughs> program. <laughs> he's got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of uh, yeah. ratatouille. Yeah. But they're going for the sort of chicken Twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. Yeah. I, 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 the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meat. There's nothing I've. Re uh, you know, it's a mixture of. It's not, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you but talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually Jeez. makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always it's salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think yeah, lamb is the lamb, best of all the meats? Lamb is oh. delicious. And you no. just you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just 
it was, oh, and I tell you, and I put it in the, f you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, you know, late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat, it was just on. everywhere, chip pervading, fat just on. one of those chip fat fries that's just, yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day, I used to eat just things. bubbling away. I used to eat beef and pork and that, and uh, it, it, I used to have to eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway. <laughs> Where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad <laughs> in my house, right? It was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now, is, uh, that, is that? Do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even. It's no, not even I've, a palate. I've, That's I've, too nice I've, a word I've to I've got more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I, I used to I used to eat beef and pork. What do you mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean. Squeamish. I suddenly think it's about cooked. it. I can eat. I, I can eat like, you know, like, it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognisably an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going. I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take the head off, cook, cook, really cook, take the skin off, I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Uh, if I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But lunchtime, would you? I spend, you'd be happy to spend twenty quid! On lunch! So Imagine what? that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need yes that much is. food at lunchtime. Yes we, I, I know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger in curry for lunch, you're asleep by one thirty. we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV <laughs> shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just eating a sheep <laughs> and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. <laughs> he doesn't eat car, he does not like the spare. He, he, he'll go, he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for it. Having an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, here's but... the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It's it should be to my 50p. discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer no. me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't right. even do that. No, it's right, the way that you would like. I said, where's the 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. God. That's not your decision to I, didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just I just think that value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. All right, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, I just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30, and then I'll get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's no. logic. No. Mm. Don't, I no, mean, if you were in that like situation, it. Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse no. than... No, what's, what's the uh, point of having the money? I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I, I, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I if I there mean, was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh. If they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah. is the case. okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fl I, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. So what happened? Oh, you you do it. So it, it depends, doesn't it, what your job know. is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever, you can't say, oh, I'll just... Ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation. Depends. Most of the time, I've got to get in work early. I can't be hanging around till but half. You don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've called him long as a film. He was out. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day. He went away. He fell asleep at um, <laughs> quarter to eight in the bath because he was knackered. So yeah. you know, he has five weeks on the. Uh, yeah, he's so taking the piss. <laughs> God, Carl has lost patience. Doesn't even wait until the conversation is over. Wow. Feeder, pushing the senses. Quite food related. 
sort of uh, showing it. It is. You're thinking of gluttony. Did you see in, uh, I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's lost um, five stone, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. Jeez. At she's night. Twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you've got to eleven packets and you're thinking, one it's more, a, do it's it. a bit peckish. One more, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. But someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories. You know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared twenty-three stone. Damn. Um, they, what, uh, none of them died. Between the five of them, oh come on. Oh, come between the five on. of them, the Phillips family <laughs> from Worcester so weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there though? They spent five of them, and they spent three hundred pounds a week on food. Um. Uh, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Uh, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but uh, it, says, <laughs> it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that not because he's still going? He, bro <laughs> he broke five bikes. He broke five bikes Jeez. by uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, maybe now he's on that new dirt uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that, wouldn't it? That would if be one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, another food related uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, sent from someone at. Um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, oh, you returned no. it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show, don't panic, <laughs> it's nothing that bad, okay. Yeah. It's Let, we'll see. <laughs> uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out uh, on Wednesday night? Was the uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you you were alone. You were home alone where you went tonight. Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it was it a quiche? Quiche. Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for 30 minutes on 190. Uh, Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. <laughs> Take an avocado, <laughs> chop in half. Remove the stone. <laughs> Peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Yeah. Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put everything else away. Right? Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Yeah. Remove quiche from oven, cut into quarters and put on plate. Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Eat. Does she have to do that every <laughs> single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, and to be honest, that, that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> well, he didn't even do that. Oh. With instructions, yeah. it was too much. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that good at cooking. And did that, you genuinely? That's not cooking, though, is it, Carl? That's, that's, that's heating up a quiche. That's good. cooking. It is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm. I'm just. Kind so of do you? Of you could you have figured that? Out? <laughs> she left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, <laughs> yes, vinegar was? Because I've, I've I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once, and I said, right, it's, good. <laughs> it's ever since, I'm right, gonna year, die. years ago. I'm gonna die. Years ago. Oh God, it, like leaving Mr. Magoo at home. It was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. Oh. Because the you last know, like, that when you're grilling yeah. food in a pan and all that, yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere greasy. <laughs> so I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Put them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught. Well, they got stuck and they sort of caught on fire. I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just oh. as I was sort of plunging it and might have came in from work. Said, "What are you doing? What are you?" I said, no, "I'm in sausages." 
<laughs> well, the oven isn't on, I know they're in here. Just turn it off, uh, panicking and that. <laughs> I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking and oh, that. School and stuff. Oh, I didn't bother God. doing it. Oh, every time know? Suzanne comes home, she must think, "Please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner." Oh God, she comes. Oh God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home, and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. <laughs> oh, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community. Who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare for? Oh, they do. They, they can do it. Yeah, you show them once. Yeah, they, 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 they learn they, it. Whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they, they, they learn it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What what they, they put their fingers in. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are we doing? Uh, Rockbusters on Saturday. Oh, yeah, let's oh, play a song. Yeah. Play, London's play, waiting I'll tell you what, we'll play a song and do. do Why not? Yeah. It's worth waiting Plus, for. Have we still got monkey news to come? Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Roxy Music with the, uh, the old Dylan classic Hard Rains on XFM 104.9. Rock mixing it up, just mixing it up, oh, mixing yeah, and matching. We've got Neil Young, we've got a bit of uh, Roxy Music, we don't care, do we? But they were right up, bang up to date with some of the latest tracks from Feeder and the like, so. Yeah, 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 yeah big time. <laughs> but, uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, Alright. Okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> there's a there's a vehicle over there that's uh, it's changed selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed. Go on. Mm. Initial D. Yeah, where is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Donovan. Okay. Not good. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Donovan. That's one. a real clue. Mm. Well, they got it like they always do. So they're yeah. always real clues. <laughs> uh, second one. Yeah. Right. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. Right. You think about it. Here we go. Then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this um, uh, uh, John Lennon's um, wife, Yoke Ono? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was her name, Yoke Ono. Was it? Yeah, it's Yoke Ono. <laughs> that, that was, was Yoke Yoke Ono. <laughs> no, no, no. You've got it wrong. You're thinking about it. You asked if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go Yoke. You think about it. Oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh, so you oh, say no. it twice, you stuck her. So no, it's no, Yoke, no, no. Yoke, oh, 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 no. Oh, no. You, you no, her name's Yoko, oh, no, though. Yeah, Yoko, yeah. oh, no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You think, oh, the other bit, no. Yoke, oh, oh, no. Yoke, oh, oh, no. Yoke, oh, oh, no. Yoke, oh, oh, no. Yoke, oh, no, no. Oh, Yoke. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, Yoke, oh, no, yeah, go on, yeah. Next, yeah. Next, 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 yeah, yeah. And the last one was, uh I don't think this burger will catch on. That was uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right. So there's your three clues. Which, which three one it won't catch on. McFly. Well, we'd want to eat that. McFly. No, I mean, it's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> don't want one. Put it back. Have a chicken. <laughs> right? have to fly, you know? So who's, who's got the who's got the three then? Well, well done to uh, Ian Shillam. <laughs> From Mansfield, who's uh, got all those answers right amazingly. Uh, he, go, he wins all those great prizes, including uh, Ladder 49, starring Joaquin Phoenix and John Travolta, which I don't think anyone's ever seen. Yeah, there. 49 <laughs> of them. <laughs> and, um, and he wins that, but he also goes forward, as you say, to the big draw, which will come up at the uh, end of the uh, to run. win the signed uh, Homer saying, I like Carl because he's stupid like me. And you can see Matt Groening <laughs> drawing that to know it's real on uh, RickyGervais.com, and you can win that, and a signed Nigel Tufnell poster. Brilliant. <laughs> Exactly. It's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM Sugar, if I can't change your mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Monkey news. Oh, oh chimpanzee that. Monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> so monkey news, if you've uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. <laughs> um, monkey news is where Carl um, reports for us, all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone only overheard in a pub and then yeah. totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He yeah. believes it though. He believes Let's every word it. he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, <laughs> remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Uh, right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA this happened. Okay. I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. 
He's running uh-huh. short and hairy, but it goes <laughs> totally covered from top to bottom in a space suit so he didn't know it was a monkey. It's not uh, one of the customers, one of the waiters. So, th- so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners they've, they've had, right? Yeah. Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. Of <laughs> course it is. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, can we just, you know, see, see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Short fella, hairy. So the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, "Look, he's busy. You know, he's got meals to cook, and he, he hasn't really got time." He said, "It only took a minute." He said, "No, I prefer it." You know. So this I'll, is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass. I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um, so he sends for so, uh, monkey P.O.Y. So it's a bit odd. Anyway. <laughs> So, so they go. So they go out. Right? They, go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the. Uh, the kitchen doors open. Yeah, right? yeah, of course they do because they're, they're going to discover something that I don't know. So they they're just going to discover. This um, just just out of interest. This uh, the, where did this um, chef train before before we see him or reveal you know what he might look like or mm. like to eat. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so well, anyway, so uh, so they pop their head in and think we'll just we'll just nip in and go yeah, and you know, love 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 fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they stick their head. See the human. We better see the human chef. <laughs> you never guess what. <laughs> go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, cooking veg. <laughs> Right, so anyway, so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the, by the cooker and he's, yeah. uh, chopping, stu- chopping stuff. Oh, he's, he's chopping as well now. He's just like that, isn't it? It's got a little, uh, you know, he's, he's got the, the bosses in there, they're, they're like a bit shocked. So he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, what's going on here? We didn't know this, this is what's going on, you know, you, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff? So he said, well, the it's other- a monkey, I should point out, who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend. <laughs> uh, forget it. <laughs> okay, I don't know, I, I think, I think, I think, I think that one got the call. I think that one actually got the call. <laughs> Oh shit! How did he think of that? God damn it, Steve is so quick. Oh, how did he connect the two in his mind? I would never would have been able to do that, to be honest. How did he do that? Damn it! Oh, that's so funny. Oh my god. You know that's true. Like like Ricky. I remember. I I I think in the animated version he said this. He said he like Carl often makes the animals in his stories like cleverer than him. <laughs> you know, it's like, and he did it again, in the second, God, fuck. <laughs> That's true, like, he, like, Carl needs a full set of instructions, including eat. I like that it ends with eat, you know, as if, like, he wouldn't know what to do with it once it's done. Like, he's gone through all the instructions, now he doesn't know what to do. Oh, eat. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but this monkey, apparently, this chef monkey, who is... <laughs> Capable of cutting veg and so working in a restaurant in LA for some reason, you know. <laughs> oh, God. It's ridiculous. Oh, but you know, in the beginning, towards the beginning of this one, okay, see, now that the, the more we get closer to the end, and I know there's like three episodes maybe left, the more I feel like. Don't waste Carl, you know, like if you get something from Carl, go all the way and get like squeeze that whole lemon, <laughs> you know, don't leave something in there. And I think they did that in this episode. They actually missed out on a couple of times. Rick like brought the perfect thing. The thing that he said, uh, like Carl told him when they were playing golf about, <laughs> about the giraffe. You know, why can't, why can't the evolution make the giraffe no carpentry? So we can't, wow, how can you leave that? How can you not follow that up? It's amazing. Uh, and the other one as well that he said, oh my God, I can't even remember. But you know, it's like, I think Carl is at the point now where he doesn't even care. He knows they're going to end it in a, you know, like in a few episodes, you know, this is the end. So he doesn't care anymore. He, You can literally hear him. Carl, uh, Ricky's in, like, hasn't finished even his sentence, and he goes, Duck, ads, Duck, music, you know, he just doesn't bother, and this one, that's what, forget it. <laughs> oh, shit, I love it, I love Steve got to him on that one. 
God. <coughs> right. Okay. Uh, Rockbusters. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I mean, it's, yeah, the usual hit and miss, but <laughs> it's like McFly. McFly. Who would want to eat that? McFly. <laughs> Just love the way his brain works. Oh, God. The thing about the, the hot dog and, and, the, and the toaster, that was in the last, the last upload, I think, yesterday, I think, it was the interview with, with uh, Ricky and, and Carl. Oh, God. The things that he says sometimes, Carl, I cannot believe it. Like, if you can't control yourself, it's just so ridiculous. It's just, you explode. I can't. He killed me, you know, yesterday when he said the thing about the pet hate. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. Pet hate. When they shit somewhere and you can't find it. Oh, God. How do you? Th he, he's literal. He, you know, like this. Oh God, I can't describe Carl. I cannot. This is one of those things where you, you can never fully explain, like Carl's personality to someone. Accurately, cannot be done. You have to listen to what he says to understand <laughs> what this is. Because there's nothing like it, you know. If if I tell somebody, "Oh, Carl's stupid," they're not going to think any of this. It's not they don't they won't understand the level. If I tell them Carl is a genius, they won't understand it either. Like literally, you have to just listen to to what he says, and and like the more you listen to Carl, the more you understand how his brain works, and then you know what he is. I still don't know what he is, <laughs> to be honest, you know. <laughs> he could be anything. He could be uh, on both extremes, you know. I, uh, But yeah, so we got, I think, three more. I think three more left, yeah. And then that's that. I mean, there's a lot more Carl content. I mean, for... Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, for now. <laughs>